Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a mum hacks video. Today I'm going to share with you hundreds of mum hacks that have been some of your favorites over the years. This month marks 10 years for me on YouTube. In March 2014, I was sat at home with a toddler and a baby and I decided to start sharing my motherhood journey on YouTube and I have been consistently putting up videos since then for the past decade. I've made thousands of videos that have been viewed millions of times but your favorite videos are definitely my mum hacks so I thought I would share the best ones with you today and I'm also sharing it with you guys to celebrate the launch of my book it is now available to buy it's called things I wish I'd known and it is packed full of my best mum hacks and habits and everything that I wish I'd known before becoming a parent when it comes to motherhood cooking cleaning running a home there's Christmas hacks in here there's so so much and I genuinely think everyone who reads this book is going to learn something new or feel motivated to try some of the stuff in here there's even recipes there's so much so I really hope it resonates with you guys I hope you love it of course I'll put a link for the book in the description down below uh, but with all that said let's get into the mum hacks my first tip is to always have an old set of kids pajamas in the car and also an old toothbrush and toothpaste and that is because especially over the summer period we would be invited to a barbecue at say 2 p.m but then the next thing you know it's eight o'clock at night and you need to get the kids home and of course they fall asleep in the car on the way home and it's so nice when you can just transfer them into their bed so what we do is we've got the pajamas in the car we just change them into their pajamas and also brush their teeth and then you can just put them in the car drive home stick them into bed it makes life so much easier spare clothes in general in the car is just something I feel like a lot of people do already Matt and I joke about it being like the car drobe because at one point we had hats in there spare clothes when they were little I used to also have spare clothes for me in there when I was breastfeeding or even when the kids were weaning they would get food onto me so it would be nice to have spare clothes um, we've also got a towel in the car that is really handy if we go to the park and it's recently rained obviously living in the UK we can wipe down the play equipment so we've got a blanket we've got a towel we've got clothes we've got a light in our car and while we're on the topic of pajamas I thought I would show you how I fold a set of pajamas I have shared this on Instagram before but it's really simple but just means the whole set is together so all I do is lay out the top of the pajama set and then fold the bottoms and put them inside the top and then fold that all together so you have this little like PJ bundle and it looks really nice in the drawer or like Marie kondo -ed. I don't always do this in the summer because often in the summer the boys only want to sleep in the pajama box Bottoms. And I also do the same for my eldest son's football kits. He's football mad, so often he's got the top and the shorts and the socks. And I don't know if anyone else finds this, but sometimes with football kits, it's not obvious what goes with what, or what's not always obvious to me anyway. So now I fold his football kits the same way. I lay out the top, lay the shorts on there, and the socks as well, and then fold it all up into like a little parcel. And it looks really nice again in his drawer. It makes it simple to find the entire kit straight away so I like doing that. <laughs> and the next hack is so simple, I wasn't sure if I should even share it, but I was talking to a mum at Cricket and she was talking about how she struggles to always get to the school pickup on time. And I said to her, oh, I actually have an alarm on my phone so it goes off every day at 2.30. So no matter where I am, if I'm caught up on a work call or if I'm having a coffee with a friend or if I'm busy just doing something and it kind of slips my mind, I have an alarm go off to just kind of think okay get your stuff together and make a move soon so I do that and I find it really helpful and the next mum hack is one that we use every single day and that is that I freeze kids healthy smoothies as ice lollies or popsicles for the kids dessert so pretty much every night after dinner the kids will have one of these lollies 
but they're just fruit. It's just a fruit smoothie. Um, obviously in natural fruit smoothies, there's still a load of natural sugars, um, but the kids think it's like this delicious treat, but then I don't feel bad because it is literally just fruit and vegetables blended up. So that is a really good tip. The only thing is it is actually a bit tricky to open. I actually have to use a knife to kind of cut the top off, but then you can pop it up and it's a really healthy dessert. My next tip is to make the bed twice. And I have literally done this from the minute I had a newborn because it's so handy. So what I mean by that is actually make the bed with a mattress protector and then a sheet. And then on top of that, put a mattress protector and then a sheet. So when you have a newborn or a very small baby, it's great because as soon as they spit up or leak, you can just take off the top sheet and the mattress protector and then there's already a new set. So if it's at 3 a.m., it's not a big deal. While we've been getting out of nappies and everything, I do the exact same. I have a mattress protector sheet, mattress protector sheet, and it's just so handy because often if someone's going to be sick or if someone's going to have um, an accident, it is gonna happen in the early hours of the night. So it's so nice that you just go like that stick it in the wash. And my next tip is to use a toothbrush timer for your kids. And often their little electric toothbrushes will actually have a two minute timer on them that will go off. But if you want extra encouragement, there are so many toothbrush timers here on YouTube. We have used the Elmo toothbrushing song so many times with our boys, but whatever they're into, there's probably a two minute toothbrush timer for them on YouTube. Like there's even a little Luca one now because Jackson's really into Luca at the moment. But there's Paw Patrol, there's so many different characters. And the next tip is how to get grass out of your kids' Velcro on their shoes. I thought this was worth sharing because of the time of year. All the schools are cutting their grass and it really is getting stuck in my boys' shoes. So the quickest way to get it out is to get your tape dispenser and use the little scratchy bit to get it out. It takes seconds, it works every time, and it's just the easiest way to get it out. And my next mum hack is baskets. And I know that sounds weird, but I have baskets for everything and I just feel like they're so easy to just chuck things into. So we have baskets for kids' toy storage, we have baskets for the shoes, we have baskets for even Fraser's Rubik's Cubes because he has so many of them, we have baskets for the Xbox controllers because it's nice to have a place for everything, but it's also super simple to just chuck things into them. And I also like to run around with our laundry basket if I quit quickly need to do a tidy up. So I'll just grab it, chuck anything into it that needs to go elsewhere. Often it's things that need to go back upstairs and it just makes our cleanup much quicker. And this next tack is such a good one and I use it every single time that the kids are unwell and it's really helpful and really does work. So it's called the fluid challenge. So you use this when your child has had a very bad sickness bug or tummy bug, they just cannot hold anything down. So you just make up your little rehydration salts. In the UK, they're called Dyrolite, um, and it just helps to rehydrate your child. So you just make it up with water and then use a little medical syringe, which only holds about five milliliters of liquid. And you say to your child, okay, we're going to do this fluid challenge. So every five minutes, you get to have five mil of the liquid, and we're going to see how quickly we can get rid of all of like the glass of water. And because because it's such a small amount of the liquid, but it's every five minutes, they can manage to hold it down. But obviously over the course of an hour, they actually take quite a bit down and it really helps to rehydrate them and it just helps to get them better. So I would totally recommend the fluid challenge. And whenever my child is ill, I just remember brat. So that means like they can only eat bananas, rice, applesauce and toast. So if you could just remember brat, it just makes it easier to think, okay, what can they eat? And this next hack is a bit ridiculous and may only apply to a few people, but this really worked for me. And that is goggles in the bath. So two of my boys have not cared about having water chucked all over them in their face and eyes. But one of my boys really hates it when we wash his hair. So we got the goggles out. We literally washed their hair 
put goggles on and then rinse it off that way. And I know that sounds silly, but it really does work. Or also another thing that we do if we don't have the goggles around is have a dry washcloth and just hold it over their face and obviously make them lean back and rinse their hair that way and then use the washcloth um, to wash the rest of their bodies. I also wanted to share with you some buggy hacks that I used to love. The first one is to have some really good buggy clips. I'm sure you guys already do, but these are the ones that we use and they're just so handy to hang everything off of your buggy. And also if you don't already have a little clip on coffee cup holder, I would totally recommend getting one. I loved having one throughout the years for my coffee or even sometimes for the kids drinks. It was just, I found I was always putting something into it. Sometimes even my camera or my phone, just really handy. And then another tip is to weigh down the front of your buggy. You can use ankle weights for this or you can put stuff in the bottom of your buggy. But this was so helpful with my first son. When Fraser was little, see we had the one car, so then we had to walk everywhere. So often every day we'd walk up to town, but sometimes I would get like a full on food shop and there would be so much stuff hanging off the buggy that as soon as he would hop out as a toddler, it would just come crashing down to the ground. So one way that you can help that is to actually weigh down the front of it. Um, as I've said here with like ankle weights. I mean, sometimes you can still hang so much stuff off the back that it will still fall, but this really does help for the amount of things that we hang off the back of our buggies. <laughs> And the next tip I've shared so many times on this channel before, but it's such a game changer and just such a good habit to get into. And it is to lay everything out the night before. So everything that the kids are gonna wear, you could also get them to do this as well, but also everything you're gonna wear the next day, anything they need for clubs the next day, anything they need for school, take 10 or 20 minutes to do it in the evening and it makes your morning so much easier. And another little mum hack that I do is to make everything into a race, I use the boys' competitive streaks against them to get stuff done. So what I mean by that is pretty much every night, like I don't know how this is still working, I say, who's gonna win to the bath to get them upstairs and to get them showered and washed. And my next tip is to have a snack drawer or a place where your kids can easily access their own snacks. And I feel like people might be divided on this point because some people think you shouldn't have a place where they can just help themselves, but I actually really like having it. The boys always ask before they just have a snack. But when I do say, yes, you can, it's so nice that they can just go and get it, especially during the lockdown. We also made those snack boxes which was really great it was just like here's your snacks of the day help yourself like when you want one um, but we've always had a place where they can get to the crisps or the breadsticks or the biscuits or the raisins easily and I really like having that and my next hack I have shared in the past on this channel and someone actually messaged me to say they thought it was unethical, but I think it's genius. So let me know what you guys think. Basically, one of my boys just hated having their nails cut. You know, some kids freak out when they have a haircut. Mine have always been fine with the hair, but not always great when it comes to cutting their nails. So I would just do it when they were asleep. When my boys go to sleep, I wait about 20 minutes and then cut their nails and they're in such a deep sleep they don't move or wake up at all and I feel like it's actually quite kind because if it's something that causes them distress I can just wait till they're asleep just quickly cut their nails and their toenails and it's just done and it's only like once a month that I have to do that and it just makes life easier. The next hack is one that I use quite often and is a very simple way to change your mindset and I don't know where this originally came from from. I saw Hannah Michalak share this on Instagram, but then she'd seen it somewhere else and I don't know what source she saw it on, but let me know in the comments if you know. But it's literally just flipping your mind from thinking, oh, I've got to do something and changing the words to, I get to do something. So say if you're like, I've got to do the food shop, I've got to do the school run, just flip it and say, I get to do the school run, I get to do the food shopping, because lots of people don't necessarily get 
get to do those things and it instantly changes your way of thinking. And the next tip is something that I do to help with mum guilt. I feel guilty so often. It is a problem and I'm sure some of you guys have the same um, thing as well. But when I'm feeling like I haven't spent much time with them, I try to give each child 10 minutes of undivided attention. And actually across the three of them, that's still 30 minutes. So it does take up a bit of time. But if I say, talk to my eldest son about something that really interests him, like like Roblox or football and just like play football with him or even play Roblox with him. He loves that when I do that. Then I just feel like, hey, he's been seen. He feels like he's had some time with me as well. And with the other boys, I do the same. Or sometimes after school, I'll go on the trampoline with all three of them for like 30 minutes. And I feel a bit silly going on the trampoline all the time with them, but they honestly love it. And I feel like it's the kind of thing that they'll remember when they're older. And I just feel like then they just have had that that time or if something's on their mind like maybe we can talk about it or I do find that they open up a lot um, at bedtime as well when they're trying to avoid going to sleep. <laughs> I actually went downstairs to get my handbag because the hack is these pens on a string. I love these things. We've had them for years. They're just so handy because the caps are on a string. You can't lose the pen caps. So they're great for just having in your bag for restaurants. We had them on the plane. If I'm waiting for one of my kids to do gymnastics class, Jackson will often color with these and this little coloring book. And they're great, especially at the moment. A lot of restaurants that you go to are not actually giving out coloring pens and stuff because because of the coronavirus. So I'm like, don't worry, got these in my bag. I just find I use them all the time and I have done for years and I love them. My next tip is something that I repeat to myself often and that is that done is better than perfect. I think there's lots of perfectionists out there and sometimes that can stop you from getting a task done. If you can't get it exactly how you want it, you might just avoid it completely. But it's such a time saver if you just go head on and get it done. And I actually had some comments recently on my garage transformation. People saying that it wasn't perfectly labeled or it wasn't perfectly Marie kondo but we still got it done and it's so much cleaner now. So you don't have to worry about like having all the right organizational boxes and all of that. Just get it done. And while we're talking about food, I couldn't not mention meal planning and meal prepping. These are such time savers and I have a meal planning printable that I'll link below. But if you think about all the meals that you're gonna have for the week at once, it saves you so much time and thought during the week. You don't have to think about what are we gonna do for dinner because you've already planned it. And same with meal prepping, it's such a time saver. I've made so many videos about it, so I'll link some down below. But if you find meal prepping quite daunting, even just doing things like washing and cutting up fruit and having that in the fridge and washing and cutting up veg as well, then you have that on hand for meals and for snacks as well for the kids. And I often get asked how long that actually will last in the fridge, but it lasts for a good three to five days. Another foodie hack is to batch cook. So when you are actually making a meal, make double or triple it, and then you can put some of it into the freezer and your future self will thank you. I've also made some videos on slow cooker dump bags. So if you spend an hour one day making loads of slow cooker dump bags, then you can have them in your freezer on hand for a morning when you are rushing out the door and you can just stick it into your slow cooker and it's so easy. Another tip is to reorganize your home based on how often you use things. So recently we had a declutter and I really thought about if things were in the right place. So for instance, our first aid kit used to be really high up and out of reach because obviously I thought that was safer. But now that the boys are older, we actually use it so often. We need plasters, we need hay fever medication, we need creams and all kinds of things. So I decided to move it and it's made my life so much easier. And equally, there were some electrical appliances that we don't actually use that often. So I have moved them out to the garage to make room for the things that we actually do use. The next tag helps me to manage the kids' clothes. And I don't know if this will be relevant to everyone, but it's been so helpful for us. We have three boys and they're all catching each other up in size. And I'm constantly looking at labels when I'm folding laundry and I really wanted to like speed that up. So we've done a couple 
couple of things. So when it comes to the boys' underwear or pants, we've made it so that one boy has all solid color underwear, one has all stripe, and one has all camo. And that means it will also work when things are handed down as well. And when it comes to the kids' school socks, because they wear a school uniform, but all of the seven-year-old socks are just like all gray, and then all of the 10-year-old socks have camo on the bottom. So when I'm folding the laundry, I can just quickly look and just know what pile it gets chucked into. <laughs> now that I've mentioned cleaning, I also wanted to say that setting a timer on your phone is such a great way to speed up your cleaning time. If you set a timer for 10 to 20 minutes, you will be amazed at how much you can get done and it can really stop you from procrastinating. If you're like, right, I'm gonna speed clean this room for only 10 minutes, you'll be amazed how quickly you get stuff done. Another really cool time-saving hack is to create a VIP photo album on your phone and then you can put anything important into that. So you can do things like screenshot um, school trip information or party invitations, but also you could take photos of things like your passport, your license, your national insurance number, all of that and have it in one place. And you can also add a password if you want to. Just don't be afraid to have quick, easy dinners some nights for the kids. I'll often make pancakes with bacon for dinner and it's literally their favorite. Or we'll also do things like beige buffets, especially here in England, when the kids get hot dinners for lunch, if they're eating a roast dinner for lunch at school, I think it's okay for them to like have a more relaxed like panini or sandwich for dinner. That's just me and it's probably one of their favorite things. And the next mum hack that someone sent in that I thought was a great idea was to make a little mini first aid kit in a pencil case or a small makeup case and then put that into your handbag for when you're out and about in case your child hurts themselves. I loved this idea so I just made this with a small makeup case. I put in some band-aids or plasters, some savlon, some wipes, some cream for if they get stung or touch a stinging nettle um, and then also some painkillers as well for myself and for my child and I feel like if you go to the effort of doing this you know your children are never going to hurt themselves because it's always when you don't have a plaster or a band-aid on you that they end up scratching themselves. The next hack I have shared before but it's perfect for the wetter and colder weather. If you like to go on long walks with your baby or your toddler then this one's for you. If you get very muddy or messy buggy wheels then get two shower caps and they fit perfectly over the very muddy wheels. Now when I was filming this ours actually wasn't very muddy at all because we rarely use the buggy anymore but this worked wonders when we had very small children. Um, so yeah wanted to share that. Just have them to hand in your boot. And when I asked you guys for your best parenting tips or hacks, I was overwhelmed by how many of you guys sent this one in and it was to put your washing machine on a delayed start. So at night, they'll fill their washing machine with all the clothes, soap, softener, everything in it, but then press the delayed start button. I didn't even know that this was a thing, but it makes such sense because every morning I load the washing machine, but it would be way quicker if I could just have this ready to go and it would just turn on at say 6 a.m. And then when I come down, I could then hang it out to dry or put it in the tumble dryer. So that was a great idea. And another hack that someone sent in was to make two coffees in the morning, one for yourself to drink straight away, and then one in a thermos coffee mug so that you can take it on the school run with you when you leave for the day. I thought that was such a good idea because I actually have two coffees every morning and it would be great to have one just ready to go on the school run and then you're actually just making them once. So I loved that idea. Or if you didn't want to drink two in the morning, you could just make your coffee in like a coffee mug so that you can also have it on the go. And something that we have done for years with our kids is to teach them to hold the wings on a juice box so that it doesn't squirt everywhere. So when you have a juice box, you can actually pull the little wings on the side up teach your children to hold that rather than the body of the drink so that it doesn't go absolutely everywhere. And the next tip that I wanted to share with you is something that I've just discovered. My youngest son has started school, but he doesn't tell me anything when he gets home after school. I ask him, who does he play with? What did he learn? What did he do? And he's always like, nothing. Like I just wasn't getting anything back. So I actually Googled prompting questions to ask your children after school. I'll put a link down below so you can check it out, but it was 
things like, you know, what made you laugh today? What did you daydream about? Did you prefer choosing time or circle time? But the number one question that really makes him talk, which is quite funny actually, if I ask him who got in trouble today, he really opens up and he tells me all about what happened, you know, who went up and down the rainbow or whatever it is at school. So if your child also doesn't give much away, you can try asking them who got in trouble at school. And <laughs> it really works. And something else that we do is to keep everything that we need to get the boys ready in the morning downstairs in the kitchen. So what I mean by that is in our kitchen cupboard, we have a basket which has a second toothbrush for each boy. We've also got toothpaste, hairbrush, hair wax, um, deodorant, sun cream as well. Like literally everything that they're gonna need to get them ready and out the door in the morning. So I know some people must keep this in their downstairs toilet, but we just find having it to hand is really helpful. And someone actually sent in that they also have a drawer of socks downstairs because she said she was always needing to run upstairs and get socks. So now she just keeps some downstairs and it's been life-changing. And an organizational hack that I have shared in the past is to keep your bedding sets together by folding them up and putting them into the pillowcase that matches them as well. This makes it so quick and easy to find a whole bedding set in your airing cupboard or your cupboard itself and it also just looks really, really tidy. I've shared this before but you guys seem to love the hack in my last video about making the bed twice so I thought I would share this bedding hack as well because it really does just make it quicker to get a whole bed set. And another hack that I would totally recommend if you're trying to get more organized with your spouse is that you can have a shared calendar that you both put into and of course you can add in colleagues as well if you want to and something else we do is to have shared notes so if we want to both put onto a shopping list or actually at the moment we're planning for Caleb's birthday so we're both putting present ideas onto shared notes and it's really helpful and something that works really well for us is to offer the kids choices where we win either way so we found that sometimes the boys just want to have a choice and to be heard so in the morning if we say do you want to get dressed first or do you want to brush your teeth first we actually don't mind whichever one they choose because we win either way but then they feel like they've had that choice and also if you find that your child takes ages to choose an outfit in the morning maybe lay out two or three and they're ones that you're happy for them to wear but you could say do you want to wear this outfit or do you want to wear this outfit and it really can help to speed things up the hack that so many of you guys actually sent in when I asked on on Instagram is to wash shoes in the washing machine and to wash hats in the dishwasher. I have shown us washing hats before in the dishwasher because Matt wears so many and this is a great way to wash them so that they don't lose their shape. And same with shoes, if they haven't got like leather on them or anything, as long as you wash them on a very low heat, then they're absolutely fine in the washing machine. And some actually have shoe settings or sports settings on them. So definitely check that, a hack that I love to do is to dress the boys in very bright colors when we go anywhere that's like a public space so say if we go to the park or to a soft play or to a show I love to be able to just point them out very easily it's another hack that I really love as a way to get the kids to eat veggies is to get them to kind of eat them mindlessly or when they're very hungry so when the kids come home from school that is exactly when they're starving so if you have some veg cut up like maybe some carrots and some cucumbers and and some hummus they'll like you know when they're just tired after school and they just hang out on the couch that's a great time to say here's some veggies and they'll kind of like mindlessly eat it or they just eat it because they're very hungry and it's a great way to get another one of their five a day into them. Next up, I wanted to talk about toy rotation. This is perfect if your child loses interest in toys. You can put half away or maybe even a quarter away into the garage or into the loft and then every few weeks just rotate your toys. So bring some out put some away and then it feels like they always have these new toys and it really does work and it also helps to like minimalize the amount of things that you have out. We're currently redoing our kitchen and I was thinking about the food that I could make when we don't have an oven and I noticed that you can cook potato waffles in the toaster. It literally takes just five minutes. You put the potato waffle down just twice until it's like a nice golden brown and then it's cooked and then you can serve it with like 
roasted beans or sausages or whatever your kids like to have with it. And you don't have to preheat an oven. It takes like 15 minutes when you do cook it in the oven. So it's way faster and I don't know why I never realized that before. A really cool hack that I wish I'd known sooner is that you can use your Apple AirPods and your iPhone to make a baby monitor. Obviously you won't want to use this all the time, but I think this would be perfect if you were on holiday or over at a friend's house for the evening and you put your baby down in another room, but you wanted to be able to listen and know that they are okay. So the way to do this is to go to the settings app and then choose the control center, then hit the plus sign and then you can choose hearing. So that will now appear on your control center. And then when you actually want to listen in, you can go to the hearing icon, press that and you actually put the phone in the room where your baby is. And then you can either put the little AirPod into your own ear or turn up the volume really loud and have that sat near you so that you'll be able to hear if any sound comes through this. I suppose you could also use this to like eavesdrop on people as well, but I just thought this would be a great like temporary baby monitor and I had no idea that you could do this. And this next hack has saved me so much time in the morning when I'm getting the kids ready for school and I need to find all of their winter gear, like their hats, scarves, and gloves. I have baskets for each of those things, but I was still finding that I was having to search through the baskets to find the hat that they wanted to wear. So what I've done is hang a clear shoe organizer on the back of the door where we keep our coats. And that way every item is on its own. It's also see-through so you can see exactly what you need and where everything is. It makes it so much quicker to just say, okay, that's the hat that you want. That's the gloves that you want in the morning. So I have loved doing this. I know so many people use these shoe organizers for other organization, like for baby clothes or for shoes itself, but I have found that storing winter gear in it has been really useful. The next tech is one that I discovered when I was ordering Christmas presents. I had all these packages being delivered to the house and a few of them had styrofoam in them to like keep things safe or what I thought was styrofoam. And I remember saying to my friend, like, I think it's awful that they're packaging them in this. It's so bad for the environment and she said no those are called eco pops so they're like they look like styrofoam but they're 100% biodegradable and you can just put them into your sink pour like warm water over them and they melt down to nothing or you can also plant them in soil and as I said they're 100% biodegradable so they're much better for the environment but I was getting them from companies that used to use like shredded paper um, like Lush and Jo Malone and now they use these eco pops. So if you didn't know that because that was news to me, now you know you can just melt them down yourself. And my next tack is to use your Alexa or Google Assistant to entertain the kids on rainy days. There are so many games that you can play on them. For instance, if you say to Alexa, play the animal workout game, it will have your kids like slithering around like snakes or jumping around like a kangaroo. Or if you say to your Google Assistant, play tic-tac-toe, tell me a joke, play the guess the animal sounds game or the freeze dance game. There are lots of different ones. You could probably just say to it, can we play a game? And it will like help you play one. But if you have a look online, maybe I'll link an article down below and you can see all the ones you can play. It's really fun and interactive for the kids. And a simple everyday mum hack that really works is if you find that you get too many wipes out of the packet when you take one, what you can do is put a hairband around the pack of wipes and that will hold down the rest of the wipes just enough for you to just get one wipe out. This is great if you're changing your baby and you're doing it all with one hand. You'll just get the one that you need. And I also have another homework hack for you guys. And actually, if you wanna see a whole video on homework hacks on their own, let me know and I will put that together for you guys. But if you have younger children who actually like to do their homework at the dining table with you rather than maybe in their rooms, then this is perfect. What you can do is create a simple homework caddy. You can do this with one of those like spinny pen things. I actually got one of these on Amazon, but you can also use like a cleaning caddy or just a box or whatever you have. Just fill it with all the things that you'll need for homework. Often I find the kids need like glue, scissors, sticking, markers, pencils, erasers, and stuff like that. So I've put it all into this caddy. And then when it's homework time, I can just get this out, put it on the dining table, and we can work through whatever they need to do. And I just know that all the supplies that we need to do
do the homework is right there. They also get pretty excited about it as well. And we can kind of all do homework together at the table. And as I just mentioned a cleaning caddy, I wanted to show you a really cool hack on how you can use a cleaning caddy as a car protector, especially if your kids play sport or football and get really, really muddy. Every Sunday, my eldest has like a football match and he has been so muddy lately. So you can actually put one of these into your car, maybe into the boot. And when they're done playing football, if you don't want them to like take everything off, you can actually put this at their feet. They can stick their feet into the cleaning caddy and it will protect your car. And then when you get home, all the mud is gonna be in that. And I also wanted to share with you a life hack on the easiest way to remove a sticky label. I've seen so many people share different ways online, like rub peanut butter on it or nail polish remover, but actually the easiest way to remove an annoying sticky label is to blow dry it for a few seconds. This will heat it up just long enough for you to be able to peel it back easily. And I used this a lot over the Christmas period. We had some packages arrive from Amazon that were just the actual like product box. So to get those like really sticky address labels off, I would just blow dry it and take it off that way. I also did this recently on a new bowl that we got for Kiki. It was like one of those really annoying labels that didn't even come off when I tried to like wash it off. Um, so all I did was blow dry it and ta-da, it came off. And my next tip is more of a mindset trick than a hack, but it's something that I've been doing this year that's really been working. So I wanted to share it with you guys. So I was looking at ways, like how was I gonna fit all this self-care in? How was I gonna get exercise in every day? You know, just simple things like hydrating, having like healthy balanced meals and taking my vitamins and stuff. And then I started thinking, this is crazy. Like I should just treat myself the way that I treat the kids. You know, I always make sure that they're hydrating, that they take their vitamins, that they have healthy balanced meals and snacks and get exercise. I sign them up for like gymnastics and football. Um, you know, I make sure they have a bath every night and just like all those little basic things. And then I thought, why don't I just treat myself like every day the way that I treat the kids. And since I've been thinking like that, I've just been waking up and making sure that I take my vitamins because I would make sure that they wouldn't miss them. Do you know what I mean? I hope this makes sense. Um, it's something so simple, but often as a mom, our basic needs, like things like having a shower somehow becomes a luxury, but it shouldn't. So this is my restaurant bag. This is so simple to make up. You can use like an old makeup case or maybe like an old clear plastic folder and just put a few things in it for your kids to do. Maybe some markers or crayons, some coloring pens, some coloring pages and any little toys that they like. I really like that this isn't screen based. So if your kids are getting a little bit like frustrated at the table, you can pull this out and there's loads for them to do. And I also wanted to talk about coverless duvets. I feel like this is something that's catching on here in the UK, but it's more of like a normal thing over in like North America. But you guys love that hack that I recently shared about using binder clips in the corners of your duvet to hold it in place. So I feel like this is like on the similar lines of that. So you can now get these coverless duvets online on various different websites. We recently got just a plain white one for Caleb's bed, but you can get like more fun kids prints. And the great thing about it is it is literally the duvet and the cover like all in one. So nothing ever slides around, but when you do need to wash it, you just chuck the whole thing into your washing machine and into your tumble dryer as well. Something else that I wanted to show you guys is how we repurposed the coffee cup holder that used to hang off of our buggy or pram. So now that we don't use a buggy anymore because our boys are all older, we've actually put this on the top bunk bed. So if you have bunk beds, this is a great little hack for whoever is up there. Now whoever's sleeping up there has a place to put some water or a drink. And I actually saw on Amazon that you can get like complete like bags that sort of hang off the bunk bed at the top and they can put like a book in it, a drink and like anything else that they need up there. And this next tack is a great one for boys that are potty training. And as a mom of three boys, I've used this one a lot and my youngest is now standing up. So we needed to practice aim. And I have found that the easiest way to do this is to just put some Cheerios into the toilet bowl. They float, they're easy to flush and it's great to just say to your child, okay, 
aim at the Cheerios. I know some people use those toilet bowl cleaners um, for kids to aim at as well, but Cheerios, they're right in the toilet. So I think that they're perfect for that. A question that I get a lot, and that is how do you label your kids' clothes or uniform? And I do it in two ways stamps and stickers. I'll link these in the description if you're interested, but I love the stamps because they make labeling really, really quick. I have a stamp with each child's name on it and you can literally stamp straight into the clothes like this, or you can put it on tags as well. But this is great for items that are tricky to label like socks, for instance, and the ink lasts for about 50 washes, which is great. And then for bottles or Tupperware like this, I use stickers and they're really good. They don't even come off in the dishwasher. And another sticker hack, which you might have seen on my channel in the past, is this one where you basically cut the sticker in half, place it into your child's shoes, and that helps them know which shoe is for the right foot. So as you can see, they line up here, whereas when they're the wrong way around, they don't. I love this hack, but I have found that the stickers sometimes just come off onto my kids' socks. So I've actually started using a pen. With black school shoes like this, I use a white chalk pen, and I actually draw, like you can either draw a heart or a little smiley face like this, and that way they line up. In other trainers, you can just use like a black sharpie and it's really really effective and helps my son know which shoe is for the right foot i also wanted to show you a little organizational hack for your children's school bags i was finding ours were just everywhere throughout the hallway so i bought these command hooks when i bought them they said they were for handbags or for wreaths as well so they're nice and strong and i've just put them here and now all the school bags are like have a little place they're off the ground as well and the kids know to hang them up here and a really good tip if you ever find that the velcro on your kids shoes isn't sticking as well it might get fluff in it or dog hair or as you can see here there is grass in ours because it's kind of that time of year the quickest way to get any of that off of the velcro is to use a tape dispenser the little like metal teeth on the end of it take everything out of the velcro so quickly so i'll often just run this over as you can see like it's all come out straight away and then the shoes will stick again very well and another shoe hack that i wanted to share with you is if your child struggles with laces then you can actually take them out and swap them for elastic laces to help speed them up and make it easier for them to put their shoes on i ordered these just on amazon and they were really easy to just swap out so i just took the laces out put the elastic ones in and it made his shoes like slip-ons. So he can do laces, but he was finding that he was taking too long when it was PE lesson and he didn't want to ask for help from the teacher. So we just swapped them out for these um, and it's made it so much easier for him to just put them on himself. I also really like to use routine charts or chore charts because I find it motivates my kids and keeps them focused in the morning and evening on everything that they need to do. So I'll link these charts charts down below they're just on my website but I actually print them and put them into a plastic wallet that I can use like a dry eraser marker on so I just put down everything that they need to do in the morning and in the evening as well any chores that they have or homework as well and then we put a reward that they want to have if they keep that up for the whole week and if they do then they'll get that reward normally it's robux that they actually want and then I also have a school routine chart which is kind for me but also for the kids and it just keeps us all focused on what we need to do and I also really like these magnetic whiteboards that you can get for the fridge it just keeps everyone focused on like things that are going on clubs you can also put meals as well on there and I really like them and a really cool way to illustrate to your kids what your evening routine is, is to actually color sections onto a clock. I got this one on Amazon for about eight pounds, and I'm just gonna draw on different sections. This is great if your kids are learning how to tell time or they're at primary school. So as you can see, I've done 3.30 to 4.30, it's playtime and like relax after school. 4.30 to 5.30, we're gonna look at homework, then it's dinner, and then it's bath and bed. This way you can kind of point to the clock and say, okay, playtime's over now, let's look at any homework you have to do. And that's how we tend to do it. Like my kids like to have some playtime as soon as they get in. I think, you know, they've had a busy day at school, they wanna chill out, maybe even have some screen time. Then I'll say, okay, have you got any homework? Should we do your reading? Should we do your spellings now? And then I can kind of be helping them while I'm making dinner 
dinner and then obviously we can eat and then go upstairs. And something else I wanted to show you which I've only just discovered um, are erasable pens. We've got these for Fraser to have for senior school but it's so cool they're pens but if you do mess up they have a special eraser on the back and you can actually just erase your answer and change it. And an easy way to get your kids involved with packing their own lunch is to write a little tick list on the inside of their lunch bag. So here I'm writing sandwich, fruit, crisps, treat, and an extra snack like normally I put like a yogurt or something like that. And then just make sure that everything that they're gonna need to help pack their lunch is reachable for them. So as you can see in this drawer, we have all the water bottles. We also have all the lunch bags so they can just grab whichever one that they want. Our snack drawer is also nice and low, easy for the kids to access things like crisps and stuff. And then in the fridge, we keep treats, fruit, yogurts, and other things that they might like to put into their lunch. And then it's super easy for them to help out. You can add this to their chore chart or like just make it a task for them to do. For my youngest, I'll probably make the sandwich and let him choose everything else but for my older two they're capable of making their own sandwich and this is a great way to give them a little bit more responsibility. I also wanted to show you something small that I do but my kids love it. I actually write little notes on bananas. You can do this with a normal pen but I also have these edible pens. These are really for like cakes and cupcakes but you can use them on things like fruit and they also work really well on wraps and if I ever draw or write a little message on my kids' um, wraps, they just love it. My, I'm sure the teachers are like, what is this? But they are edible. Then a great way to get organized with your kids' clothes or uniform that they're gonna wear for the week is to put it in a shoe organizer or something similar like this, which I bought on Amazon. It has five compartments and it even has clear windows you can see through to it. And you can put Monday to Friday's clothes in each pocket. So you're just kind of organizing it once on a Sunday. Um, so for me, obviously my kids go to school so I'm putting a full uniform parcel in with underwear, socks, shorts, shirts, jumpers, everything. And this next tip is great if you have a child in senior school or high school it is to get different colored folders for each subject. So now that my eldest is at senior school and he's got lots of different classes and subjects and he's been given lots of different notebooks and textbooks as well. So now we're keeping them each in a colored folder and then the night before school he just checks his time to table sees what he's got on the next day and only chooses the folders for those subjects. This means that his bag and locker isn't completely weighed down. He's only bringing to school what he really needs to use for that day. This hack that I wanted to show you is actually this little product and this is the whole reason that I had to make another mum hack video. This is amazing and such a find. I wish I found it earlier on in having children. It is basically a Clark's foot measurer that I found on John Lewis so that you can measure your children's feet at home. My children hate going to have their feet measured and I always worry that they're outgrowing their shoes and that they maybe wouldn't tell me or couldn't communicate it. So this is brilliant to have at home. I can just check if they've grown or not and then I can order their shoes online. My next hack is for those mums who have a baby that loves stealing the remote controls. And one of my viewers actually sent this to me on Instagram as like an idea of what I could do. So thank you so much. All you have to do is get yourself some Velcro with like a self-adhesive on the back, put a little bit of the Velcro onto the clicker, put another piece of the Velcro onto the TV, and then you always have a place where you can put it that is up high and out of reach. My next hack is a really good one if you have a teething baby. All you have to do is get yourself a little flannel. I buy mine from Poundland, they're so, so cheap. Um, so just get yourself a flannel and then you wanna put some applesauce or even I use our baby pouches um, and just put some in the middle, close it up and freeze it in the freezer and your baby will have something really sweet and cold to chew on and it will soothe their gums. My next hack is a really good way to make sure your bath toys don't get moldy on the inside. It is so gross when that happens. So when we buy our bath toys now, I will use my hot glue gun and just close the little hole on the bath toys and they still float and they work absolutely fine, but no water can get in and it can't get moldy. Is for if your children hurt themselves. We have a little Mr. Bump like this that we keep in the fridge, but another really nice thing to do to soothe any like bumped heads, etc., is to get some marshmallows and freeze them in a Ziploc bag. They hold the cold, but they are still quite soft. And then once they've thawed out from the bump, they have a sweet treat to have afterwards. 
Okay, so hack number one is basically a way to store your bibs. I just bought an adhesive hook like so, stick it onto the back of your high chair and then you always have bibs to hand. Okay, so if you have a filthy car like me, get yourself a cereal container. I just bought this one from Poundland. You can put your rubbish in it and it has a lid for when you're driving and it's ideal for the kids. Right, I love having a retractable clothesline. It is just so easy and space saving and great to have in the garden and it also makes an awesome limbo. Also in a bottle like this, we fill one up with malt vinegar and then use this to spray on our chips. When the bath toys get dirty in this house and grubby and just general toys get sticky with food, etc., I'm so lazy that I just have to throw it into the washing machine and wash it on a hot wash. Or you can also put it in the dishwasher. And when I put it in the dishwasher, I again wash it slightly on a hotter wash to make sure they're really clean. If you have fabric chairs like we do, you will probably want to protect them from your children. We just bought this oil cloth from Kath Kids In and also got a staple gun as well. And I just roughly cut out the fabric around the chair size, flip the chair over and then staple gun the fabric to the bottom and voila, it keeps them safe with this cover. And this also works really well on tabletops and like kids tabletops as well. When your child's unwell, save empty tissue boxes so that one can act as a bin. If you have a rug that moves a lot, get yourself a glue gun and glue the bottom of it. Obviously wait for the glue to dry before you flip it back over, but when you flip it over it won't budge. You could even do this on baby socks as well. If you have a toddler that rolls over non-stop when you're trying to change their nappy, just put your leg over their tummy like this and it will make it a lot more difficult for them to roll over. It's probably the one that I use the most during the summer and it's one to help your baby sleep. Pack yourself some tin foil and also some tape when you go on holiday and when you arrive at your hotel or your villa, if their room is too bright, you can tape the tin foil to the windows and it will make a complete blackout. It doesn't look like much, but it will let your baby sleep and that is what we need. My next hack is one that I love. We make frozen yogurts in the summer. So all you have to do is get some yogurt pots like this, cut some slits in the tops and then pop some spoons into the slit and then put it into your freezer and because you have kept the packaging on even if it won't close with them stood up you can lay it down on its side and it will freeze just as well and then when you take them out of the freezer just run the packaging under a little bit of warm water and out pops a frozen yogurt and this is a really nice treat and it's a little bit healthier than traditional ice lolly. Another great treat in the summer is watermelon. My kids love watermelon, so all they do is cut it up into triangles and then cut a slit into the green skin and then you can stick some popsicle sticks in this. I normally find these in my kids' craft um, stuff. So just pop them into the slits. It might take a little bit of umph, but then it's less messy. My eldest has OCD and doesn't really want to hold it. So then you have like a little watermelon lolly like this, and um, you can either eat it just as it is, just like this, or you can even pop these into the freezer and then they have a delicious melon lolly. These are surprisingly yummy, just so easy to make. A great hack to catch any drips from all of those lollies is to get yourself some cupcake cases like this, put a hole into it and then put the stick of the lolly through it. It takes little ones a lot longer to eat lollies. So this is a great way of catching any drips so it doesn't run down their arm. And now onto my favorite beach hacks for mums. When we go to the sea, I always worry about my baby being too close to the sea because of the current. It really scares me. So what I do is dig a hole, just a shallow hole to make a baby pool. Then grab yourself a shower curtain or a waterproof tablecloth cloth, something like that, and line your hole with this. Then go around the edges and pat down the sand to weigh down the sides, and then fill it up with water. And you have yourself a really cute baby pool, and then your whole family can enjoy the beach, your baby can sit in the pool, keep cool, and Jackson really loves this. He really, really enjoys it. Obviously you could take a baby pool to the beach, but it could fly away, and Jackson was not tempted to climb out out of this at all. Next time, 
time. I will definitely have to make it bigger though because our bigger boys really wanted to get in it. And when you do want to go for a swim at the beach, hide your valuables in a nappy or a diaper, um, seal it all up, and hopefully if anyone was looking to take anything, they wouldn't want to take a full nappy. And rather than spend lots of money on a fancy phone case for the beach so that sand and water doesn't get into your phone, did you know a Ziploc bag works just as well? Stick your phone in and seal it up and it will still work and you can even take pictures and you don't have to worry about sand or water getting into your phone. To make a sand-free place for your baby, bring a fitted sheet to the beach with you. Put bags or towels or shoes into the corners and this will make a nice little area for you to either put your towel down and sit or for your baby to sit and play in the shade. This is great because they won't get covered in sand and it's so, so simple to do. In the height of summer, the sand can get really hot as well. So this is a really nice place for your baby to be able to have a little bit of a crawl around without getting too hot or sandy. And once you're all done at the beach, I know lots of mums know this hack to use talcum powder to get the sand off. We normally walk back from the beach and by then the sand on our feet is dry and it works best with dry sand. So just sprinkle a little bit of this powder on and it's so strange, it like magically comes off of your feet. It's so, so easy. You definitely don't need as much as he just put on, <laughs> but it, it's a really, really cool trick and one that we we'll use when we go away. One way that we encourage our kids to wash their hands is to get hand soap that they love. You can get it in all different characters. We actually found this one the other day. It's a little R2D2 and it even makes a noise when you use it. You can also get hand soap that smells like sweets. You can get it in strawberry laces or bubble gum as well and our kids really like using that. It's also important that they wash their hands for long enough. So a little hack that we do is to sing a nursery rhyme or you can sing happy birthday twice and that is about 20 seconds long. There's just a bit more to it than just standing there and washing their hands. You can sing along happy birthday with them and it will make sure that they really wash them for long enough and get all of those germs off. My next hack is from a viewer who's also a doctor. She commented this on my last Sick Kid Hack video she said that if you pick your child up from nursery or school and they seem unwell maybe like they're coming down with something getting a temperature um, then when you get them home make sure that you change their clothes and give them a bath as well viruses and germs can actually live on your clothes and continue to infect you another home remedy if you have a very sore throat is to have jelly or you can also make up a hot jelly drink. So if you get jelly in powder form, boil the kettle and fill up a cup with it. And then just add a little bit of the jelly powder into the hot water. It coats your throat and it helps so much. I know this might be higher in sugar, but it really, really does work, so give it a try. The next hack I discovered when my eldest had croup. Fraser used to get croup quite often when he was about three or four years old. He seemed really susceptible to it. One thing that would really help him when he was very congested was to go into the bathroom and to make it steamy. So whether we were playing on the floor of the bathroom and making it steamy by having a hot shower just running, or if I would run a hot bath and he would happily play in the bath with toys, it would just help to loosen up the mucus and help him to breathe easier. And if you have a very small baby, this might be something that you could do as well. Just go into the bathroom, run a hot shower, and just kind of stand near the shower so that the steam is coming out and it will just help to loosen them up. My next hack is one if your child is suffering from a sickness bug. In my last video, I talked about using puppy pads next to your children's bed if they are suffering with sickness, but if they do miss the puppy pads and they do end up vomiting on the carpet, one thing you can do once you've cleaned up the majority is to spread over um, baking soda generously onto the stain. Leave it there for an hour or two before hoovering it up. This will really help with the smell and help to soak up some of the moisture. The next hack is one that I got from my son's school. He came home and told me about this and I was like, that is genius. This hack is gonna make your children want to put their rubbish into the bin or trash. 
So at his school, they say on the bins that they are wishing bins and that if you put your rubbish into the bin, you can make a wish. So I thought that was really clever and I've also found something online that you can get for your child's bin, which is a little basketball net. I bought this for Fraser. It's obviously a bit gimmicky, but also quite fun. So I put this into his room and every time he gets a piece of rubbish through the basket, it like shouts hooray or it does like an applause and we all really love it. The only problem with this is that they will like put toys and stuff in there because they want to get the like applause but if your child is terrible at putting stuff in the bin this might be a product to consider and you can even get laundry baskets that have a um, basketball net on them as well and if your children tend to use too much soap when they're washing their hands we have a few bottles like this that gives out so much soap for their little hands and it's one that they really like the smell of so they definitely go overboard on this soap so all I did was take an elastic band wrap it around the top of the soap so that they now always get the right amount this next hack is one that I saw on Instagram and I thought it was such a good idea. It's a way to cover your paddling pool so that leaves and grass don't get into it overnight. We tend to leave our water in the paddling pool for two to three days because it takes so long to fill up and it feels so very wasteful um, to just chuck out the full paddling pool at the end of the day. So this girl said to use a fitted sheet to put it over your paddling pool. I tested this out and I must admit I did struggle a little bit because we have such a huge paddling pool for eight people but if you had a slightly smaller rectangular paddling pool I think this is such a good idea my next hack is such a simple one but it's one that I've used for years and I still do it almost every day so this hack is to use a pizza cutter to cut up your children's food into bite-sized pieces pizza cutters are not just for pizza they're also great for toast especially cheese on toast they're great for pancakes they're great for eggy bread omelets you name it test it out it's honestly so quick and easy to do i also have a great hack if your children like to play with stickers all you do is pull off the sticky bit around the stickers and this makes it so much easier for little hands to take the stickers off this next hack is another really simple one, but I've done it for years and it really does work. If I ever have a fussy toddler or baby, I will put them into the bath. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, but a bath seems to really calm them down. It can be soothing, but also fun. So you can stick them into the bath with maybe some bubbles and some toys, and it really can help with fussiness. And when my children are in the bath, I have another hack for how I wash their hair without getting soap or water into their eyes. I tell my boys to look up towards the sky or the moon or the sun, and then I give them a dry flannel and they hold it over their eyes and I wash their hair like that. And then once I've done that, I then use the flannel to wash their face and the rest of them. I know this is such a simple one, but when you wash their hair, they can get quite upset if you just drench them with water. So I thought it was worth sharing. My next mum hack is also a cleaning hack, and that is to use magic erasers to get out stubborn stains and marks. I picked mine up in Poundland and I use them for so many things. I have no idea how this thing works, but it's amazing. I tend to cut this down to size and use it on our surfaces, skirting boards for scuffs, in the bath, if my boys ever take toys that are not bath toys and then they scratch the bath with it, this is the only thing that gets those marks off. And this is also fantastic at cleaning up trainers or sneakers as well. And for my next hack, I wanted to tell you about a product that I've recently discovered which has really been working for us. This is called a toy light and what this does is light up your toilet bowl at night if your child gets up and goes to use the toilet. So it basically has a sensor on it and you hook it onto the side of your toilet bowl and when your child walks in, if the room is dark and there is motion, it will just light up the toilet bowl so they can see enough to use the loo but they don't have to put on the overhead blinding lights. It's also great for aim if you have a boy and it could also be really fun for potty training because the light goes rainbow or you can choose whatever color you want it to be 
pink, blue, green, whatever you want. So I thought I would share that with you. Before this hack, I thought I would show you how to seal a bag of crisps without using a bag clip. I recently showed this hack on my Instagram and it had well over 100,000 views and so many positive comments. So this hack is perfect if you're out for a picnic and you don't have a bag clip on you and you finish half a bag of crisps. So all you do is fold down the top bit fold in the two sides and then kind of like turn it inside out on itself. So I'll show you what I mean. While we're talking about crisps, I thought I would show you a really cute way to share them rather than ripping open a crisp packet and like laying them on a table. You can roll down the top bit and then roll up the bottom bit and it turns into this really cute little serving bowl. So I'll show you how to do it. This next hack is for babies and toddlers that are over six months old and like messy play. One of my sons in particular used to love messy play, but whenever it came to playing with sand or slime, he would just put it into his mouth and try to eat it. So this is an idea for edible sand. So all you do is basically blend up some Cheerios and let them play with it that way. I'm not saying that you should encourage them to eat the sand, but by doing it this way, if and when they do eat it, it's not a big deal. have a cheeky toddler that likes to pull the toilet roll like this and take it all around the house or just generally use too much when they're on the toilet, I have a really simple hack for you. All you have to do is squish your toilet roll so that it is nearly flat and that makes it harder for them to spin around so they'll use less and they can't just do this. Next hack is a way to stop your child's ice lolly or popsicle from dripping all down their arm when they take longer to eat it and it melts. So for years I've been talking about cupcake cases and how you can take an ice lolly, put it through a cupcake case and that really helps to catch a few of the drips. But recently I saw a hack that is possibly even better than that and that is to take a little Pringles can take the lid off, put a slit into the lid, and then pop the ice lolly through that, and that catches the drips even better. And I also have another Pringles lid hack, and this one is actually from one of my viewers. I shared on Instagram how I like to save and recycle my goo dessert pots because they make perfect little portions of mac and cheese. So I'll batch cook my mac and cheese for the kids and then put them into these little pots. And normally I would cover them with cling film, but someone messaged me and said that the Pringles lids actually fit perfectly onto the goo pots. So I tried it and it works amazing well. And while I'm on a roll with lid hacks, the coffee that we buy comes with these lids on it and these are also the same that you get on the small Nutella jars and these fit perfectly on two cans. This next hack is a summer hack for your paddling pool. So if your kids want to play the paddling pool but then they don't want to be freezing and you don't want to be boiling kettles to warm up the water, you can actually connect your garden hose to your tap in your kitchen and then make it warmer. So I have used a balloon here. All you do is cut off some of the balloon, attach it to the hose using some duct tape and then attach it to your kitchen sink and then turn on the water that way. 
or you can also buy connectors on Amazon so you can connect your kitchen tap to your hose. Right guys, that is it for this video. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you so, so much for watching. And don't forget, my book is now out. I'll put a link in the description and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.